why are you protesting at Citibank? Uh, we're protesting at, at Citibank all summer uh, because of Citibank's uh, support uh, for for the fossil fuel industry, which is which is torturing the planet. The Citibank, uh, it's it's astonishing hypocrisy. Uh, at at the time of the Paris uh, Accords, or shortly after the Paris Accords, Citibank was one of the first signatories uh, to the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero. They committed to uh, uh, being a part of meeting the the Paris Accords uh, oh. to to um, bring down carbon emissions. And they promptly uh, invested $396 billion in new fossil fuels. So they, they promised to be part of the solution, and they're absolutely one of the biggest parts of the problem in the world. So why is it that a bank, how is it that a bank actually causes climate change, though? That, that, I understand how oil companies do, but how does a bank create climate um, change? Oil companies can't do what they do without financing. So they, they need financing to build new oil plants and to build new fossil fuel plants and to, to build the structures that are uh, making the um, liquefied natural gas, the liquefied poison gas exports possible. So, so the oil company goes to the bank for a loan and or the bank presumably could say no. The banks can, can say no. Right. But, but so that's what you're asking. You're asking that the banks stop funding this. That's right. And we know that they can't do this. Other banks have stopped doing this. So you, the public pressure is a campaign to do what? We are pressuring uh, the Citibank to stop funding the, uh, the construction of new fossil fuel infrastructure. The new infrastructure that's being financed by this $396 billion dollars uh, it's 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 not producing fossil fuels now. It's going to be producing fossil fuels for 40 years into the future. It's that will continue to raise the levels of carbon in the atmosphere. It'll continue to raise the temperature of the planet. We have already hit the 1.5 degree mark uh, that was the Paris Climate Accords goal. We're already yeah. there. We need to start reducing production of fossil fuels and emissions instantly in order to halt the rise in, in carbon levels and, and the rise in temperatures. When you put money in the bank, your money doesn't just sit there in the bank. The bank then takes that money and does stuff with it and does all sorts of things with it. The bank will leverage your money 30 to one. So if you have a million dollars and they're not supposed to, but they do, if you have a million dollars in the bank, that means they'll lend out $30 million against that $1 million. <laughs> I mean, not many of us have a million dollars in the bank. I wish I did. But let's say you had $30 in the bank. That's still, oh God, math, $900 going to the fossil fuel industry if they want, right? So you, 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 th there is uh, something that we don't recognize, that the bank doesn't just put your money like under a mattress. It immediately then goes and gives it to something else that they think will make them more money. Those are the investment bankers, and they invest in fossil fuels. They invest in the destruction and the doom of our of our planet. And so, divesting from those bank accounts, those particular banks like Citibank and JP Morgan Chase, um, is an important thing to do if you have money at all, because your money you don't want to like hand your money over to people who are using it to kill you. I mean, obviously you wouldn't do that, right? Um, so as part of this campaign, making people aware that Citibank is in fact financing the end of the world and financing their own demise. Yeah, and yeah, and there are campaigns asking people to move their money. Um, Third Act has especially um, publicized the campaign, asking people to move their money, tear up their credit yeah. cards, and, and, and do business with, with banks that, that do better with this, with this issue. Yeah, and in fact, well, I, I mean, I was a part of those first campaigns um, for, for divestment actually here in this house. They were rehearsed, the first, the, the do the math tour, the first divestment tours uh, with Bill McKibben and Naomi Klein. In fact, I made a movie about it. So my line of questioning is, um, you know, I know the answers, but I'm just, I'm just trying to say, 
for people who are listening to this, making it clear the connection between banks, their own money, those big institutions like Citibank, it's very annoying to divest your bank account, to bank with amalgamated, to bank with a bank that doesn't have ATMs freaking everywhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it is important to do so because otherwise you're basically paying for your own death. Because it's not simply that they're funding drilling. It's not simply that they're funding tankers or LNG terminals. They are actually funding wars. Mm -hmm. These are bullets that are in your bank account if you're in Citibank. Yes. So uh, Citibank has, has big investments in arms manufacturers. Um, so, uh, and the, there's a really very tight relationship between uh, fossil fuel industry, climate uh, crisis, and, and war. Because so many of our wars are fought for control over fossil fuel resources. We fight wars in the Middle East to, to control oil resources. We send arms to Israel to, to protect our ally in the Middle East. Uh, and some people feel that, that's, uh, that we do that in part to uh, have a foothold in, in the Middle East to control the oil resources. Um, whether or not that is actually the reason uh, why we why we are arming that war, uh, the arming of that war, it consumes an enormous amount of fossil fuels and produces an enormous amount of pollution all by itself. Simply the war. Well, irrespective of the war in Israel and in Gaza, there a huge amount of the American military budget goes to protecting fossil fuel tanker ships throughout the world, um, and so. You know, obviously, security and issues of transportation. You know, I think it's something like uh, half of the fleet of all shipping in the world is just fossil fuels. Um, so, what are you prepared to do tomorrow? Um, and how they, how has this escalated um, and deepened your personal commitment to your conviction? The, the protest tomorrow is, is a, a free speech issue to, to a large extent. Um, the intention of the order of protection appears to us to be not to make James Flynn safe from some threat. There is no threat to James Flynn. The intention is to suppress protest. It's, the intention is to protect one of the most powerful corporations in the world, Citibank, from the embarrassment of our presence. Um, Are you prepared to go to jail for a longer period of time than a day or so that is usually the kind of penalty for civil disobedience of this kind? Yes, I am. This but you do expect to potentially be arrested tomorrow, and at that point, anything can happen. Is that right? We can be arrested tomorrow. That's one of the more likely outcomes of, of the action tomorrow. And we, ex we expect to, uh, to be arraigned and to, be, and to go through central booking. Going I mean, central booking is no uh, cakewalk. It's no fun. Um, and being in jail is no fun. Why do you feel so strongly um, that if you have to sacrifice your own personal freedom, your own individual freedom, your, your literal freedom for this, why do you feel so strongly and, and, and how are you mentally preparing for that? Um, the Yale professor, Tim Snyder, a couple of years ago, wrote this very, very popular little book called On Tyranny, you know, Lessons on How to Resist. Mm -hmm. And the first lesson in that book, the very first thing he says is, do not resist. Do not obey in advance. Do not give up your freedom before they tear it from you. And so when Alec and I saw this order of protection, we had the option to say, oh no, we're not going anywhere near that. You know, wherever we think James Flynn might be, we won't go there. Okay. And, 
And you know, that's the, that would be obeying in advance. Absolutely, that would be giving up our rights of, of speech and assembly and protest. But from instead, of, like <clears throat> just from an intellectual point of view, um, from Tom Snyder's powerful book, just personally, how do you feel? Why do this? I'm actually, you know, more comfortable in my heart uh, being in jail and risking going to jail. I'm more comfortable with that than I am with sensing every day of my life that I am complicit with the kind of suffering that, that will happen uh, when hundreds of millions of people are displaced by climate crisis and the suffering that is going on now because of the fossil fuel industry. So in many ways, you, you feel more in jail because of the current situation with the climate than you might in jail, in actual jail. You don't feel free living in this situation where you know that the planet is collapsing. Ab absolutely. Um, where does the famous quote come from that, you know, where a, a society uh, unjustly imprisons people, well, then prison is the only Thoreau. place for a just person. Yeah, Thoreau, Thoreau wrote, um, in an unjust yes. society, the only place for a just man is in jail. Um, and so you know, I've, been, I've been in jail for periods of hours. The longest time I was ever in jail was 27 hours. I haven't been tested with a long sentence. But up to now, each time I've been in jail, for me, that's been a, a sense of, of liberation there. Mm -hmm. that I, those, those are hours when I have uh, so liberated myself from the, the constraints of, of acting inside the bounds that make me complicit every day of my life. It's really interesting as a climate activist, I think we have, I think we are sort of the best uh, at imagining. We have amazing imaginations about imagining the, the horror that's on the way. And it is a constant, constant weight. And it's true when you go to jail, you feel like, well, there's not much more I could do right now. <laughs> you're done, you're sort of done. In a way, it is, it is one place where you feel that you've done your job. Josh, it is not hard to imagine what the what kind of suffering climate change will cause. It is not hard at all. Mm. Uh, by the time we get up to two degrees, scientists are telling us we will see hundreds of millions of people displaced. Mm. At the point where hundreds of millions of people are displaced, the powers that be will make, be making choices about who gets to eat and who gets to have water and who gets to have a safe place to exist on the earth. Now, that situation where somebody's deciding who gets to eat, who gets water, who gets safety, it's not hard to imagine that. We know where we can see that happening now. Playing music has been my 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 art and and my my profession for decades and decades and and I love it deeply and I've been doing less and less of it in the last three years um, because um, I haven't felt that my music making was what the movement for climate justice needed. And in fact, when I've been working in my profession, um, I often uh, feel um, I often often feel useless. I, I, I feel that in the situations where I play classical music, I feel like I'm comforting the comfortable. And 
and and and that sometimes that's really hard for me. Oh. Um, but when Alec and I uh, decided that that we needed to challenge the order of protection, uh, we felt that the most powerful way that we could do that was by going to Citibank, going to that mm -hmm. plaza in the most non-violent way that we possibly could. So, you know, you know, John, John Cage you know, learned from his, his Indian music teacher that the purpose of music is to quiet and sober the mind and oh. making it susceptible to divine influences. So that is, is the most peaceful and nonviolent thing that we can possibly bring uh, to City Bank. So we what are you going to pull? Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, 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 no. no. Um, not at all. I'm, I'm going to play movements from the Suites for Unaccompanied Cello by J.S. Bach. It's a thing that we don't think about in terms of climate often we we see waves of the ocean taking out buildings and we see forests on fire but you know the more i think of it the more i realize that everything is on the line the works of bach the works of shakespeare every movie you've ever seen every piece of art um you know there is no art on the planet that burns to a crisp and and so you are in many ways showing one of the things that could be eradicated from the planet. Music. Is there anything that you hope to inspire as a musician, as an artist, that is different than what you might hope to inspire as an activist in people who are going to learn of this event? You know, in Extinction Rebellion, uh, we we sign our letters and our notes with a with a little motto: love and rage. And um, sometimes in our actions, it's easier to bring the rage. And tomorrow's will be much more about about bringing the love and and remembering all of us remembering that uh, that love is is what we're doing this for. Mm -hmm. So I'll be, I will be playing music that, um, that, that is inspired by divine love uh, in, a, in, a, in an attempt to, as, as Cage taught us, to quiet and sober our minds and, and make them susceptible to divine influences and, and to love. Love for what? Love most of all for life and, and for all life, for all lives, uh, for, for all human lives and for all non-human lives. That, that's what this movement is about. You know, it is a, it is a sacrifice, however, to, to give up your, your freedom. But in, in many ways, I think what you're trying to say is that we are all in a prison of this catastrophic future. And it is an extremely difficult thing to carry around with you. Freedom, if it isn't for everybody, it isn't freedom, it's privilege. What do you hope to have people uh, do in reaction to this? What, what do you want your fellow citizens of New York City to, to do now? You know, we're appealing to, to everyone on the spectrum of allies, uh, the people who seem to be indifferent right now, and the people who are passive supporters of this movement, especially to the people who are passive supporters of this movement. We, we want you to give up that passivity and do something. You know, you know, put your bodies in the streets in the next protest. Um, how can people get involved? 
um, get in touch with Extinction Rebellion or uh, Extinction Rebellion NYC if you're living in, in New York City um, or our, our comrade organizations, Climate Defiance, uh, the, mm. the Summer of Heat Coalition. Mm -hmm.